Hello everyone and welcome to session four of Star Trek Mata Hari. If this is your first time joining us, we are playing a Star Trek Adventures games as using the system put out by Modifius Entertainment. We are set in the year 2412, 2411 uh, in the Shackleton Expanse, which is kind of to the northeast of Klingon space. But uh, all you really need to know is that we're in a big playground and there's a lot of cool things happening. Uh, if you want to play catch up, the VODs can be found on my YouTube and most of the popular podcast solutions. I don't really have much in the way of announcements this week, so why don't we just go ahead and go around and get everyone to introduce themselves and their characters, then we'll run the intro, and then we'll jump right into things. So starting with the captain. Hello, my name is Charles Wolf or Dear Wolf. I am playing Captain Frederick O'Connor, formerly Malik Joban. Oh, I need to fix that overlay. I'll fix it later. Oh, <laughs> XO. And uh, my name is Nick Helvashi. I play the uh, first officer, Commander Jara Rian. And then we have our chief of security. Hello, I'm Mike. I play Tave Jennings, the chief of security. And then we have uh, our intelligence officer. Hey, I am Alex. I play Lieutenant Commander Prowl, the intelligence officer. And then we have our science officer. I'm Jeff, and I'm playing the science officer, Jax Jensen. And last but not least, we have our Chief Engineer. I'm Brian, and I'm playing Lieutenant Commander Jemr Tolayap, Chief Engineer. All right, and with that, let's go ahead and run our fancy intro. Welcome back. So something I like doing with all my Star Trek games is having the players do an opening log. And today, Mr. Jensen has that honor. So Mr. Jensen, if you'd be so kind. All right. Uh, Science Officer's Log, Stardate 888-01.3. We just left Narendra Station. To say the ma ma maiden voyage of the Mata Hari has been a challenging would be the understatement of the century. One might even call it a disaster. We left space dock with not one, but two sabotage computer, computer cores and a malicious holographic program impersonating a Starfleet captain. Morale right now is understandably low. I cannot help but doubt my own abilities at this point. I thought I had earned this position, but I was chosen by a malicious program. Maybe I don't deserve to be here. I spoke with my former commander, Captain Kim. He says I should stay. He quoted one of his Voyager stories from the Delta Quadrant again. I swear the stories are inspirational the first few times you hear them, but after a while they start to sound like fishing stories. The danger in the situation just seemed too fantastic to be real. Then again, I was almost killed by a holographic literary villain. As for the ship, Commander Tolab oversaw the installation of the new properly functioning computer cores and the inspection of the rest of the ship. He's an interesting one, very capable, but seems to be very dismissive of suggestions from others. When it comes to the ship systems, it's his way or the highway. But so far, his way has gotten me exposed, literally, and almost killed. Maybe recent events will open him up to new ideas. As for the rest of the senior staff, I must commend Commander uh, Jero for his leadership in getting us back safely, as well as Commander Paul. Once the threats were realized, Paul stepped in in a big way to ensure the safety of the crew and ship. While he blames himself for not realizing the captain was a fraud, I don't think he should carry the blame alone. We were all there and we were all fooled. 
and now we move on. Our new captain has arrived. And I must say, I don't envy his position, but I am hopeful he can get us back to the mission at hand. We're now headed to star system 663RM2 in search of a missing a planetary survey probe. Hopefully our journey will be uneventful since I have that bright, shiny new science lab I'm dying to try it. All right, thank you so much. So our first scene today is ironically going to be on the holodeck. And for thematic sake, I'm going to say that everyone but the captain arrives sort of as a group. Uh, <laughs> the doors to the holodeck open. And what you see on the other side of the doors is a golf green, like a golf course. And uh, we'll say what, uh, let's say the second or third hole uh, you see uh, Captain O'Connor. So, uh, Dear Wolf, if you would kindly uh, give us a visual description of uh, Mr. O'Connor. So, Mr. O'Connor is wearing a like plaid-colored hat, a plaid <laughs> shirt. He has shorts, like golf shorts, on. And standing next to him is a holographic image of Tiger Woods, giving him instructions. And he looks somewhat frustrated, as does the hologram at his performance. He pulls back takes a swing completely biffs it and the ball just just curves to the left right into the right into the right into a pot and it just goes bloop and he just oh, son of a biscuit turns back oh welcome everyone it's good to see you i'm frederick o'connor your new captain pleasure to make all your acquaintances in person i'd like to note that i am uh standing right next to the door okay uh Captain, I think that our choice of meeting venue is making some people uncomfortable. Yeah, does anybody have a tricorder? <laughs> you know, I thought of this before I invited you all here, and realizing now this probably wasn't the best place to do it. Perhaps we should uh, a computer and program. Mr. Woods, thank you always for your time. And of course, and Tiger Woods just whoosh. And the actual, like, square wire walls of the holodeck and the yellow gridded floor appear. So the ho the program is no longer running, just a bare holodeck. I will say this all to you all though. I, I did pick this location for a reason. I think it is best to face your fears head on. And obviously you've all been through a terrible situation, one in which you all feel probably that you, how do I put this lightly? That you may have missed something or to be, put it plainly, fucked up, but Honest to God, I don't think you did. And as you may be aware, and perhaps you aren't aware, Starfleet wanted to disband this crew, wanted to disband it fiercely. I was actually on the board that was assigned to review your case and something spoke to me. I told my wife, Mary, that something would have to be worthy of my time to take me back to the stars. I've been, I've been on the ground for oh, some five years now since I've captained a starship, but your crew, the situation you've been through, the fact that you hadn't had a chance to prove yourself, it, it truly spoke to me. And that's why I'm here. I believe you all deserve a fair chance and you didn't get it last time. With that being said, um, I understand science officer. I, I forget your name, forgive me. Uh, what was that again? Uh, it's com uh, Lieutenant Commander Jensen, sir. Ah, Commander Jensen. I'll learn your names soon enough. But I must tell you, um, or actually if you could tell me uh, what is our current mission and where are we heading off to? Just give me a briefing real quick. Okay. Uh, well, currently we're headed off to... Cool family note down. We're headed to uh, a remote star system to search for a missing probe. Uh, so kind of curious what's going on there, sir. I hadn't had a chance to read the briefing yet, so I'm glad that you did. Usually I'm up to date on these sort of things, but I just wanted to try out some of the new gadgets on this beautiful starship. Again, it's been a while since I hit the holodeck on a starship. With that being said, I must say I'm mighty impressed. Uh, status report from the security officer. Anything I should be aware of? Uh, nothing that I can think of right now, Captain. There's something we can discuss later, but uh, hmm. everything's well, fine at the moment. I would like to meet with you after we're done with this uh, quick brief, and you can meet me in the ready room. And engineering, anything? Is the uh, new computer core uh, working and functioning properly? No uh, rogue AIs or mysterious holographic uh, captains to be worried about, are there? Uh, not that I'm aware of, Captain. I'm glad to hear it. Also, if anyone would like to scan me and make sure I'm real, I wouldn't be offended in the slightest. <laughs> I imagine everyone takes on a tricorder and scans <laughs> That would be delightful. 
<laughs> and uh, first officer, it is a pleasure to meet you. I'm actually walk over, extend my hands, and it is a firm, solid handshake. I meet you eye to eye. I believe we're going to be, it's going to be a pleasure working with you, sir. What you did with this crew after that situation is it's something you should be very proud of. And I'm going to give a commendation to to Starfleet on your behalf. I believe that one day you will be a captain of your own. So after a situation like that, I believe you truly deserve it. I want you to know that. I I appreciate it, sir. Uh, after everything that went down, I was afraid I might have um I might have closed off that opportunity uh, uh, with the with the top brass. I don't know why you would think that. You managed to keep a crew together, functioning, and get them home safely without a loss of any life. That in itself is something that you should be truly proud of. It's 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 that kind of action, action under severe distress that that, that makes a true captain. So I tell you this much: I I hope you're not my first officer for too long, and I don't mean that in the wrong way. <laughs> I'll like pat you on the shoulder a little, a little, like just give you a little 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 like punch on the shoulder, you know? Yeah. Uh, and uh, security or not security. Uh, intelligence officer <laughs> i do want to have a meeting with you a little bit later today um could you fit you fit maybe 15 20 minutes in your schedule for me i can find that easily for you sir excellent i got a few things i want to go over with you some uh some private matters as it were some things that we can't talk about and i give everybody a quick wink and a nudge <laughs> other than okay. that, oh, any questions for me um the did the board overseeing uh, the incident happen to come up with any results as to why there were Romulan computer cores in our system in the first place? I'm going to be honest with you. I'm not really supposed to discuss that with you at this time, but to be completely candid with you, and I do believe in candidness with my crew, we don't know. We simply don't know what happened. We're still investigating it. But believe me this, as soon as we find out, I will inform you all. I believe you do deserve that uh, more than anyone else. Yeah. Any other questions? Not, current. Not at this time, so. Well, excellent. Well, I'm feeling a little sweaty, a little embarrassed at that last swing. So I'm gonna go take a quick shower and uh, I'll meet the rest of you on the bridge. Uh, security, if you could give me 30 minutes, I'll meet you in the ready room, all right? And I tell you Excuse what, this. I think it is appropriate for me to spend two threat here to cause something to happen. <laughs> and what happens is, don't worry, not a hologram, nothing like that. Okay. But uh, Captain, uh, and I guess everyone, not just the Captain, you're hearing the engines a bit more louder than usual. And the longer it goes on, the you know the louder and louder it gets until finally um, a chirp on both Tuleip's and the Captain's communicator goes off. Uh, Tuleip here. Captain? Uh, and this is Ensign Raven speaking. Uh, sirs, you probably want to come to the bridge for this one. We're, uh, it's hard to explain, sir. It's best if you get everyone up here as soon as possible. On my way. On my way. We'll, uh, we'll book it. I guess I won't get that shower. <laughs> Here we go again. All right. So we're going to cut to the CIC. And uh, let's get everyone's tokens where they should be. Uh, Captain, you're, of course, at your table. To lay up, you're over here at Ops. I'll move it for the stream in a moment. Mr. Jensen, you are at Science. And then Prawl, let's just move them all up so I can move them quicker. All right, so Jennings, you're Tactical. Jaro, you're across the table from the Captain. And Prawl, let's put you over at Resource. All right, so uh, as you emerge onto the bridge, uh, what you see is that the hollow display in the middle of the bridge is displaying that. You know how usually in the view screen you see stars going past? They're like white streaks of light. Well, they're beginning to wink out. And those that remain are now red tinted and growing longer and longer and longer uh, the more time passes. And apparently there's Ensign Raven. Uh, Ensign Raven uh, shouts from uh, navigation, uh, Captain, I I couldn't make heads or tails of what's going on out there. Is are we moving or is it the space around us moving? Uh, unclear, sir. Science, and... we need a scan of the local space around us. Find out what's going on. All right. And yeah, Jensen, you're going to do a reason science. 
and the uh, Matahari will assist you with a sensor science. The difficulty with your advanced sensors is going to be a zero. And since you now have high resolution sensors, you get basically two free questions. I'm also going to ask uh, engineering, are we accelerating? I'm still assessing, Captain. And okay, thank you. All right, so that's going to be three successes for three momentum. Mm -hmm. All right, so Jensen, what you're seeing is that you have entered into a gigantic subspace field that is not just slowing the ship down, but it's large enough that, to put it plainly, this is like solar system sized. And it's moving, uh, moving at about one third impulse. Hmm. Okay. Uh, so, Captain, yeah, Captain, we seem to be trapped in some kind of field. Uh, it's just slowing us down. Now, I want you to be very clear here, uh, Lieutenant Commander. Are we trapped in it, or is it just moving past us? Um. Can you can you find the edge of the field? Can we move towards it? Well, I'll use, I got two, those two free questions, so I can, uh, can I find the edge of the field? I would say yes, but the problem is, mm, excuse me, uh, is that you are more or less being drawn towards one star in particular on the view screen that is just barely visible. Like it's on the edge of infrared and the visible spectrum. So it's, it's very faint, but still red. Okay. And what I would say is that with your momentum spend, what you do know is that not only is space distorting, but time is also distorting. It is speeding up compared to the outside universe. Do you know how fast it is? How much time are we losing? Well, you're actually gaining time. It's going faster than traditional. So we're, we're, our, yeah, we're perceiving time faster than the rest of the universe. Correct. Oh dear, Maddie's going to be very upset with me. Uh, and uh, so we're being, uh, I don't think we can get out of this captain. We're being drawn to that star. Hmm. Well, options. Anyone got any suggestions? I must tell you also, there was some talk among the board that reviewed this that said this starship was cursed. I'm beginning to believe it might be. <laughs> I let an uneasy chuckle out. <laughs> uh, Ensign Raven, can you try to move us towards the edge of the field? Uh, maximum impulse. I sir, trying at maximum impulse. And uh, yeah, if someone wants to roll for Ensign Raven, that's going to be a control and a con, uh, followed by the ship assisting with an engines and con. All right, I'll roll for the ship. Could I assist her with advisor? And I have a focus team dynamics. Yeah, I'll allow it. You will assist with a presence command. All right, let me get that shot. So presence. So uh, what is the ship rolling again? The ship is rolling engines and con. 1d20, right? Uh, for your assist, yes. Okay. Then... Oh, the difficulty is a three. So... Does supervisor give me an extra die, or do I get to let somebody re-roll? I can't remember what that did. Uh, advisor lets them re-roll their, one of their die. Supervisor does what? Supervisor effectively does nothing. I will allow you to switch out that talent at your convenience. I thought it did something. My bad. I'll, it, I'll it, it it's one of those, like, get me talents where it's, it's a trap option because mm -hmm. nobody actually uses crew support. But... All right, cool. But I get to roll a d20 as well? Yes, you do get to roll a d20. And yes. then who's handling a uh, Raven? It's a prawl. Why don't you handle Raven? I got to accept And what was I rolling for Raven? Control and con. We've got one success. Two, actually, because the... Uh... Oh. Yeah, the ship got an assist there. Nice. Or is that the old assist? That's no, the that's, the that's the new one. That's the new one. The old so assist was a zero. Two dice? Yep, two dice. And would her Starship Helm operation be a focus? Most definitely would. 
Wow, that is a grand total of five successes for two more momentum. You guys are already at five momentum. Good job. Good job so, Chris. Raven, uh, you you hear her tapping at her console fervently. And again, the sound of the engines grows louder. And right before Taleop maybe starts yelling to cut it before you hit the red line, uh, the almost like a rubber band snapping, uh, the ship almost buckles to the side uh, enough that the initial dampers catch you. So there's just a momentary, you know, shift to the left. Um, the Star Trek shimmy, quote unquote. Um, but when you, you know, find yourself again, uh, Ensign Raven reports, uh, well, we're free of the tractor beam or whatever was drawing us in, but we're totally enveloped by this field, sir. We're in order to get out of it. We would have to leave it full impulse. I believe I told you to engage full impulse. Correct me if I'm wrong. I, sir, I simply was curious Wait, whether you believe wanted... that order for just a moment. Engineering, science, give me a scan of the surrounding area. Since we're in this, I want to get as much information from this area as we can before we try to leave it. But I don't want to stay here long. Aye, Captain. Yes, sir. I lean over to the first officer. Mm -hmm. Jaro, what are your thoughts? Well, I'm just wondering whether this is the reason that this probe went missing that we were we were looking for. Do you think yeah. perhaps maybe the probe got sucked into this area as well? Do we know how big this is? Science. Do we know how uh, large this area is in comparison to the outside space? It's the uh, it's the size of a standard solar system, sir. By the gods, that's huge. A little on an uneasy chuckle. Right. Now, is is the space itself smaller once you? Is it larger once you enter it? Like, if we were to exit the field, would it be a smaller pocket of space? I believe the field is a standard size, but the field is moving in space. Interesting. So it's a solar system sized field moving in space, but the field itself is the size of a solar system. Is that correct? Correct. Do we have anything in our records of this sort of anomaly before? I have not heard of anything like this, sir. Could you do me a favor and extend long range sensors and see if we can if we can notice the probe anywhere in the, uh, in the immediate space inside this field? Absolutely, I can. Thank you much. All right. So, Jensen, you're going to do another reason science. The Mata Hari will assist you with sensor science. To lay up, I'd like you to assist on this one with a reason mm -hmm. engineering. Intelligence officer, is there anything in the records of anything of this nature that you can pull up? Any ships being lost or, you know, galaxy sized anomalies moving around? Let me check with the computer. Uh, off the top of my head, I'm not sure of any of those. And engineering, is there any damage to the ship after that last rubber band snap and the shimmy we did? Warp field dynamics is a focus? Yep. Looks like we got two successes on Yep, two successes are, well, one success, or no, two successes. I see your role now. Two is what you need. So what both Taleop and Jensen see is that, again, unlike when you are in a normal part of space, quote unquote, where you can look in any direction and you see hundreds, if not thousands, if not millions, if not billions of stars. What's interesting is only the very brightest stars are visible now. So you see Sirius, for example. Um, what's the other big one? Um, is it Rigel that's the other big one? That's Either way, um, you, you're seeing very few stars and those stars that you are seeing are red shifted. But what you also notice is that it'll take about 3.4 hours to reach the edge, quote unquote, of this field at full impulse. However, the path that this anomaly will take will run it by the Foggy Peak system. And I'll let you role play that out before I add anything else. Uh, so we could potentially escape the system, Captain, or this, the field, but, uh, we are going to go by the Foggy Peak system inside of this anomaly. Now, if we were to stay sedentary in the system, would we move with it or would it eventually move past us? Uh, I, if, 
I think it would draw us with it. I think Quick it's question and, out of character. Is that where we were supposed to go? No, uh, it's just kind of on your way. Also, if you could let me know, are there any inhabited planets on that system where this anomaly could pass through and perhaps cause any problems? Uh, are there any listed in the records? There are, and Prawl would see this too. Uh, there is approximately 75,000 Federation colonists in the Foggy Peak system. Oh dear. What kind of interaction or damage could this anomaly moving past that system cause? Well, uh, based on what we're seeing, uh, it would accelerate time on the colony as well. Um, we're talking about unnatural aging, potentially development of the colony at a rapid, at a rapid pace. Do we know what the time dilation difference is? Is it a one-to-one? Uh, -one? Is it one-to-twenty? How much time are we losing outside of this anomaly? Yeah, and have we been able to evaluate that? If you give me one momentum, I will answer that question. I think we, you mean you I give us a momentum and we get free question? That sounds great. I think I think <laughs> it's it's worth the momentum. I just yeah. threat, yeah, absolutely. Uh, go for it. All right. Yeah. So to use a uh, example uh, in terms of processing capability, your ship, your computer core, operates at about 3.5 times faster than the outside universe. And that's sort of why a Star Trek computer core is such a big deal, because mm -hmm. it handles things at literally faster than light speeds. The difference between that and what the time dilation is with the exterior universe, if the Starfleet computer is a drop of water, then what's going on inside the field is a bucket overflowing of water. And I, I don't mean like a, a metal pail. I mean like almost like a cooler size that you would dump on somebody at the end of a sporting event sized oh, no. pool. Um, if you want a specific number, it's somewhere uh, on a one to one billion ratio. So conceivably, the amount of time you could spend years in here and emerge back outside of it and no time at all will have passed. How fast is the anomaly moving? One oh, so we're inside this. If we exit, no time has passed. Correct. So we're moving faster in here, but the time outside is staying outside space. slow. Right. Okay, so yeah. we're moving faster in time here, but the outside is the same. Okay, my That's fear was that we were inside and time was speeding up outside and like years were passing outside and like we'd leave and my wife would be dead. And, and honestly, O'Connor would be sad about that. He likes yeah. she's a good woman. No, no, it's uh yeah. Okay. So we're we're talking about it could be potentially be the end of a end of the civilization on this planet. And sorry, how time. fast is the anomaly moving? One third impulse. Okay. So it would probably spend a very long time in that system. I must tell you, I kinda wish I'd stayed on the ground. <laughs> this is more than I want to handle. Uh, this anomaly is very similar to a uh, warp space, warp field bubble, right? It is some form of a subspace field, but even your expertise, you've never seen anything like this. Is it naturally occurring or does it appear to be formulating? Also, science, did, were you able to get a location on the beacon? Uh, I don't think we first heard anything from the probe, did we? Nope, unfortunately not. Okay. However... Uh, let's give Jens, or Jennings and Prawl a chance to shine here. Uh, Jennings, why don't you roll me a reason security? Prawl, why don't you roll me a reason... What's better for you, a con or a science? Science. Roll me a reason science, please. And these are two separate tasks. Uh, each is a difficulty of one. So, roll what you will. Uh, one more dice there, Jennings. Would investigation be an applicable focus? I'll give it to you. All right. And that means you get a grand total of one momentum, guys. So Jennings, what you learn is that there is, at the center of this anomaly, what you're seeing is strange. There are almost fractal patterns in metallic structures that are swirling around a barely visible red haze. 
And uh, Prawl, what you're seeing similarly is that the center of this anomaly, the center of the gravity that, you know, the entire subspace field is moving along with, what you're seeing is that it's almost like a, I don't want to say a black hole because that would be too much, but it's something extremely dense and extremely powerful on a gravitational scale that is moving uh, everything else around it. So we're looking at the same thing and seeing two different things? Correct. Captain, I'm seeing some form of gravimetric anomaly that this whole subspace bubble seems to be being propelled by. Is it natural or is it artificial? From the quick scan I was able to decipher, I can't tell. Well, I must tell you, the explorer in me is curious and wants to investigate but the man inside me that wants to not die a horrible death wants to leave. Uh, let's put it to a vote. <laughs> Thoughts, first officer, what do you think? I'm afraid of leaving before we know more because I'm afraid for the colonists that we can't figure out how to knock this off its course or, or turn it off. 75,000 souls, they don't deserve to die in that way and no. never see their fans and family again. I would agree with that. Security, are you on board with this plan? Should yeah, we... I'm not a fan of tuck and tail and run, but I'd like to, if we were cautious, maybe raise right. some shields. We should have done that a while back. I think that's a good idea. Shields up. <laughs> go to red alert. No, I wouldn't go to red alert yet. Okay, no red alert. I just no wanted alert? to push the button. I have a button for it. I wanted to push it. <laughs> I think shields up. I think that's a good idea. And uh, intelligence, what do you say? I think this warrants more investigation. I like your mind. Science, I know you must be itching to find out what's going on with this anomaly. I've read your papers. <laughs> oh, yeah. The anomaly, but also we need to make sure that colony is prepared. Amen, brother. And engineering, you think this old girl can get us where we need to go? Uh, Captain, I believe that she will do it as, as necessary. And more importantly... Are you confident and willing to do it with us? I don't think that matters at this point. You've already made up your mind. <laughs> well, your opinion still matters, lad. Come on. Don't be don't be pouting over there. I don't know that I would take the ship closer to the anomaly before we figure out how to uh, nullify its effects. I would agree with that. We should keep our distance. So science, if you can give me as many scans as you can and try to identify it at this range, we'll slowly move forward. And I want you to get as much information as you can before we get too close. Last thing I want to have happen is us to be pulled into it. I understand we were stuck in some sort of, now was it a tractor beam? Was it just a gravitational pull? Are we aware of what that force was that we broke free of? Um, well, it was behaving like a tractor beam. It could have been related to the anomaly or it could have been related to something to that that star. Can you go through the scans of that anomaly that the computer took and mm -hmm. try to figure out if it was locked on to us specifically or we've just caught in a wave of some kind? Absolutely. Very good. All right. So uh, we're going to handle this in a thematic sense uh, as you run the simulations, look at your sensor scans, etc., etc. As you get closer and closer to the, of course, cautiously closer to the center of this anomaly, what you see is tremendous. It is, for lack of a better term, it is spectacular. Um, and I will put you guys on this map because I think it actually shows very well um, what it is you're looking at. Um, of course, it's not redshifted, but what you're seeing is around what is essentially a star. There is all God. manner of metallic objects, some rings, some simple plates. Um, all of them are just surrounding the star, capturing the energy that it's putting off. And they are not just absorbing it, but they're also putting it out to structures that are farther out. So if you imagine almost like a, uh, a Russian nesting doll, uh, where the f inner layer takes most of it, pumps it out to the second layer, then to the third layer, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. 
Um, but this is essentially something that has never been seen. It's been theorized, but it is something that is tremendous. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to give you all access to a handout. And I would like it if you all flavored that appropriately. Give you a moment to read it there. It's a Dyson sphere. Sort of. Even name is kind of Buster's name comes from Russian Scandinavian. Now slightly smaller, and it all contains that and so on. In your head. <laughs> yeah, I was gonna say. All right. Uh... Hi, baby. Hi. I'm playing a game right now. I know. Yeah, I know it was a bit, a bit of an info dump there, but I wanted to be thorough. Oh my gosh. Uh, yeah, kind of a Dyson sphere, but... So it was just a massive computer. Yeah, it's... it's yeah, it's... Uh, calling a game computer is kind of like calling a spaceship a ship it's not yeah it like really one doesn't. that sails on the ocean yeah like calling a spaceship a boat this is a this is something that would that you know even starfleet and all its intelligence wouldn't even have the amount have the mind to put something like this together are there any Jensen, life signs? You did get a little quiet there, Jensen, if I may interject real oh, quick. Oh, I am sorry. I, I was just, just saying, you know, the Starfleet is millennia away from something of this magnitude. I don't think any of the major powers in the Alpha or Beta Quadrants working together could come up with something like this. No. Uh, I can only think of a handful of species in our histories that might have the, the capabilities but have never shown the interest. Well, science, could you do me a favor? Full scan. I want you to gather as much data, as much information as you can, but keep us away from the ring until we know more about it. And also, let me know if you see any uh, scan any life scan. scan. Blah, blah, blah. Sorry, this accent's so hard. Do you life know science. any life signs? <laughs> Thank you. Hi, Captain. So, uh, I think I uh, know this already, but just to make sure, we don't have any secret telepaths or empaths in the senior staff right nope okay because uh what's going to happen is ensign raven will pipe up and say sir uh medical is reporting that the telepaths and empaths aboard are experiencing what they call a severe migraine apparently there is something out there a great presence or a great number of presences that is almost drowning out their own thoughts is it causing them medical harm or damage? Uh, medical says they have it under control, sir. I don't but want they're... to put at risk. Please keep me abreast of the situation. If it escalates, I want to know right away. Yes, sir. Charo, thoughts? Is there any way we can communicate with it? I mean, I... I can our communication systems interface with whatever it is that that this thinking machine uh, communicates with? Well, I, I wonder if they'd be open to reason. There's no I, harm in this sending a uh, communication a, tether. Why not? Uh, why not just send out a broad stream, broad uh, broad spectrum uh, hail? Yeah, I would, I would, that's what I would recommend. So open a, open a channel, all frequencies. Raven uh, pushes a button, says channel open, sir. Greetings, beings of the large sphere around the sun. Uh, this is Captain Frederick O'Connor of the USS Starship Matahari. We come in peace. Okay. Awkwardly look at the crew. 
So, uh, Mr. Jensen, what you're seeing is that something I forgot to tell you about the panels is that all of the panels uh, actually have their own emitters and thrusters built into them. Like, they are mini marvels in and of themselves. And what you're noticing is that these panels are, or at least some of them, are beginning to coalesce and gather into, uh, to shape into an object. Um, but in order to tell what this object is, I'm going to need, uh, from you or really anyone, I'm going to need a, uh, control or re, let's do reason, reason plus con at a difficulty of two. I've got a, yeah. I mean, I can do it if someone wants to assist. Yeah. Yeah. I'll assist with that. All right. Would, uh, so I have, uh, I assume this is sensor operations. Oh yeah. Okay. Just checking on. Let's see. There you go. There's nothing. Oh, I got one. All right. There's one. Let's see if you get any on the assist. You do. So I threw the Matahari so that it, of course, it's not to scale, but uh, you know, you are seeing the thing, whatever it is, coalesce, and after a few moments, there is a almost one-to-one -one copy of the USS Matahari beginning to drift towards you. Uh, Captain? <laughs> um, can you hail the other vessel? Uh... Matahari original to copy Matahari. This is Captain Frederick O'Connor. Please respond. There is no reply. However, Mr. Jennings, I'd like you to roll me a inside security, please. Difficulty of one. And if you have starship recognition, Starfleet protocol, uh, ship design, anything I have like starship that. recognition, can I assist? You may assist, yeah. Starship uh, tactics? Uh, not tactics, per se, maybe. No. All right, there's one from Jennings. Would it be presence command? I would say no. You would also do an insight security. Insight security. Wait, I think I picked the wrong thing. Insight, insight, security, dice pool, focus, yes. And you get the one success you need. So what you both notice in your own way is that the running lights aren't flashing in the usual pattern. Like, there's a... There's a specific pattern that Starfleet run, you know, Starfleet does for its running lights. This is completely different. Intelligence, can you run the pattern of lights through an old, uh, it's an old Earth uh, style of communication called Morris Code, to see if you can pick anything up. All right, let me see what the computer can come up with, sir. And uh, Paul, Hell, move oh, us sorry. back at the same speed that the other Matahari is approaching us. I want to keep a distance from it. Aye, sir. Oh, don't move quickly. Keep your keep the shields up. Just keep our distance from it until we know more. All right. So the Matahari, the original, begins to back up, and the other Matahari speeds up to keep the distance and maybe inch closer and closer and closer. S slowly. Just don't want to keep it far away as far away from us as we can. Okay, so I almost like to imagine like if the uh, Matryoshka brain is here, you guys are like doing laps around the star at this point, you know, kind of <laughs> like ring around the rosy. <laughs> mm -hmm. But no, uh, Prawl, if you want to roll me a uh, reason and a science, I would also give you reason and command at a difficulty of one. I will go reason and science. Investigation focus? Yeah. One is all you need. 
So what you notice is that the green and red are totally different patterns. So the, the left side is green, the right side is red. Or maybe I have that backwards. Either way, the green sequence is flashing in a repeatable pattern. Well, it's an oxymoron, but what I'm getting at is the pulses are the following numbers. Like there's a series of pulses. There's three pulses, then there's five pulses, then there's eight pulses, 13 pulses, and 21 pulses. And then the sequence repeats. As for the red ones, 7, 11, 13, 17, and 19. And then that sequence repeats. And if I need to type that out for people, I can. So 7, 11, 13, 17, and 19? Correct, for the red. And the uh, green was 3, 5, 8, 13, and what was the last one? 21. Most of those are odd numbers. Are they, are they all prime numbers? I'm no. just curious if there's anything. Could you, could no. you know 3, 5, 8, 13, 21. 21. Are those the the numbers added together? So yes. Like, yeah. yeah. 3 plus yeah. 5 is 8. Yeah. 8 plus 5 is 13. Eight, 13 plus 8 is yeah. 12. And okay. it's just missing the 1 and 2 because 1 plus 2 is 3. three. Okay. And 3 plus 2 is 5. Is it the same thing on the other on the on the support side of the ship? No, no, it's a different pattern. It's going up by four, by two, by four, by two. Yeah, it's four, two, four, two. Can we send back the next five numbers in both sequences? How would you be sending them back? Is my question. Can we modulate the exterior lights to match the colors that they're sending on the same side and then send them back? You could certainly do that. I get them. Does anyone this have is any certainly other... possible. Perhaps they're trying to communicate with us. They haven't shown any any uh, aggressiveness towards us as of yet. This may be their way of communicating. It's, it seems like an intelligence test to me. Send back the, the, uh, the next numbers and sequences. All right, Jaro, since it's your idea, why don't you give me a control and a command? And okay. if someone wants to grab the ship, that's going to be a rare communications and command. Difficulty overall of a two. I'll do it. You said communications command? Correct. Oh, God, I've never... Um, what's the difficulty? Control. Difficulty is two. Okay. Uh, I would like to buy one extra die, if that's fine, off of a momentum. Does the ship have a focus? Uh, it always has a focus, yes. Nice. Did I mess up? Uh, yeah, you rolled a complication. I'm sorry, everybody. Oh. I'm going to let you all down. So what happens, because I'm going to keep that complication a secret. So what happens is you modulate your green to flash a certain way. You modulate your red to flash a certain way. And once you put in the next sequence of numbers, so you guys figured it out pretty quickly. Uh, the green set of numbers is the Fibonacci sequence, and the red pattern is prime numbers. So you flash the next sequence. And what happens is the mirror copy of yourselves, uh, their running lights stop blinking in a pattern and just go solid. And at the same time, Mr. Jensen, your sensors are reporting that a Class M environment has appeared on the other Matahari. Before it was, you couldn't get past the hull. Mm -hmm. Now you're seeing that there's an actual like space within the paper doll, quote unquote. Right. Uh, Captain, I think they're I... inviting us over. Oh boy, Mary's gonna kill me. <laughs> well, at this point, first contact perhaps. This is something every Starfleet crew dreams of. Uh-huh. Uh, I mean, it's it's risky, but they haven't shown any hostility thus far. Well, Jaro, mm -hmm. uh, 
science, security. Let's go on our way team mission. Captain, I'd recommend that one of us stay on the ship. <laughs> Perhaps. Wouldn't uh, that be the captain's responsibility I, to stay on the ship? I was to say, I believe Starfleet. Honestly, honestly, it's been a long time since I was on an away mission, and yeah. this seems exciting. Typically, I'd lead the away mission, but if this is something you're very passionate about, I wouldn't mind binding the ship. While it's you my first. It's my first day at command in many years. I'd like to go on an adventure. Hope you don't mind. Oh, don't worry about it, guys. I'll try not to lose a second captain. Fair, fair enough. I feel like you can't repeat the same mistake again. <laughs> I have all my faith in you, sir. So does Betty. <laughs> So I'll take the uh, security officer, science, and also intelligence, and uh, okay. we'll just we'll, we'll head over. Let's go to the so transport. So I believe that right leaves over. Jarl and Tule up. Do you guys want to bring a supporting character? I would. I would like to bring. I would like. Oh. To, ooh, can we bring he wasn't that? asking you, Captain. He's asking us whether we want to bring one. Jeez, <laughs> take a <laughs> breath, <laughs> buddy. Sorry, I'm excited. It's not all about you. We have a supporting <laughs> character, Oya, who is a... Um, oh, is this who, our Benzite? Yes, it's a hey. Benzite engineering specialist who might want to come along if you want a, someone with an engineering background. I Yeah, and I had made uh, a medical officer, J J Jatrell, but I think he's Vulcan, so he's probably affected by the... Um... Nah, he doesn't have the empath or telepath talent, so I think he's Perfect. fine. Then cool. Lieutenant Dutrell it is. Alrighty. So, uh, I'm going to say for sake of argument, we don't need to actually, you know, do a, a transport task. It's fairly simple. You just press the button, it works. Um, and when the away team materializes, what you find yourselves in is a meticulously almost one-to-one -one <laughs> recreation of the Mata Hari's engine room or main engineering. And everything looks like it should. In fact, the warp core is even humming at the same frequency as yours. It's like you never left. Well, with one crucial difference, the gravity's not quite the same. In fact, as maybe one of you starts to step forward, what happens is your leg lifts up and it comes down tremendously fast and maybe a few of you end up tumbling over yourselves, almost like you're on moon gravity. Uh, well, that's, well, I'd like to start taking scans now mm -hmm. that I'm here. Mm -hmm. uh, All right. Uh, yeah, that's going to be a reason and a science for you, Jensen. Uh, Jatro will do the same. Uh, scan for life signs. Scan for life signs. All right. Go ahead and give me a uh, reason medicine for you. Uh, I would, think... we have, would we have come over armed? That is uh, entirely up to you. Uh, you I would, would have your standard I phaser would. type 2. Yeah. Yes. I was going to mention um, that before we beat it. This was quick. Yeah. yeah. Uh, does Jatrell's focus in xenobiology camp? It most definitely would. And Jensen, you do get a point of momentum. Mm -hmm. And Jatrell gets the two successes. So let's handle Jatrell first before we do Jensen. So Jatrell, what you're seeing is that it's almost like every single of these small plates, because again, the plates are what formed into this thing. The plates that were originally around the star absorbing the radiation, etc. Every single plate that's here seems to have its own unique life sign. In fact, it almost overloads the tricorder. Mm. Uh, Captain, I... the ship itself seems to be composed of individual life forms life signs oh dear uh, i'll I run a second scan can you let them know i didn't mean to step on them sorry <laughs> oh dear i jump up <laughs> i'm not sure that we have that sort of communication with the uh, life forms yet sir yeah and i mean take one of our tricorders and repeat the numbers that we did outside let them know that we've arrived it seems to be the way they communicate well, as you do that, Mr. Jensen, uh, I mean, you're you're kind of seeing the same things, but uh, what you're noticing is that where the computer screens would be, it's not actually computer screens. In fact, it's just sort of an opaque 
uh, monochrome black mirrored substance. And as you look around for maybe any working console whatsoever, alien or otherwise, mm -hmm. uh, what you notice is that as one of the away team members, let's say uh, Hoya, for example, Hoya gets close to one of the surfaces, these black mirrored surfaces, um, the sound of buzzing or almost like a high pitched whine uh, begins to emanate from the proximity to Hoya. But the moment they move away, it, it just goes away. All right. So I would recommend staying away from those. I don't think they like that, but I'm not sure. Is there any kind of radiation emanating? Are we ah, not radiation, okay. just some sound. Okay. Just, just... Interesting. Uh, with respect, Lieutenant Commander, uh, I would theorize that the buzzing sound is their attempt at communication through sonic vibration. Potentially. Uh... But I wouldn't. We can test that without getting too close. We could uh, set set our tricorders to emit a similar frequency from here. But the sounds only seem to occur when approached by one of us. Okay. Uh, let's rig up a tricorder and let's test it on one. That way, we're not all separated. Hi, sir. So. Uh, let's rig up uh, a tricorder for to emit a similar frequency and see if we can't get some form of more direct communication with the captain's permission, of course. Oh, permission granted. Let's communicate with these fascinating creatures. Uh, so can we? That's what we're going to do. All right. Yeah, that's going to be a uh, reason science difficulty of two. I think Hoya can assist with this one. Yeah. Oh, sorry, it would be a control science. Now that I, I, my brain caught up with the rest of my mouth. Uh, control science, Hoya can assist. Um, if you have anything related to uh, xenotechnology, anything related to power systems, anything related to linguistics, all would apply. I, there. I was going to say, I have linguistics. <laughs> what, about, what about jury rigging? I'd give you jury rigging, yeah. Let's see. I got one, so we need Hoya to come through. Oh, hey. nice. You get a momentum. And uh, I would say that with that extra floating momentum, uh, you can ask an additional question. But uh, what happens is as you rig up this device and begin, you know, buzzing back at a console, um, for sake of argument, uh, would it be fair for me to say that Jennings, you would be sort of pacing around, making the area secure? Yeah. Okay. So what happens is, Jennings, you're, you know, let's let's move you a little bit on the map here. You're maybe, like, over here. I mean, you're still within shooting distance if need be. <laughs> uh, but what happens is, all of a sudden, as this device is being used, um, there's almost an electrical snap or a crack. And a sound that is almost like an earth elephant begins to emanate from pretty much everywhere. And the console that you have this jury rig translation device, quote unquote, is almost just coming to life. It's popping up holographic images, holographic text, all of it in a language that is not translating with the universal translator. Mm -hmm. But before anything can happen it before anyone can react and i am spending threat to do this before any of you can act the five of you save for jennings are suddenly enveloped by an amber hued bubble that is cut off from the outside world you cannot hear out jennings cannot hear from the inside and worse as your tricorders are still running you maybe have only about 10 minutes worth of air left in this bubble. Oh lord. Well, and that's... that's where we're going to take our uh that's where we're going to take our 10 minute oh, break. Oh, oh. <sighs> so, we will be back in 10 minutes everybody. Stick around.
<laughs> and welcome back. So, uh, if you're just now tuning in, the Matahari crew has uh, gotten themselves in a little bit of a pickle. They investigated a subspace anomaly and found a marvel of engineering, uh, perhaps even a great boon or an artifact uh, known as a Matroiska brain. Uh, if you don't know what a Matroiska brain is, I recommend looking it up because it's really freaking cool. Um, but what matters for the crew of the Matahari is they were able to communicate with this Matroiska brain, this highly advanced computer. And the computer constructed almost a one-to-one -one ratio uh, copy of the Matahari. The way team went over and uh, subsequently most of them got trapped in a bubble of some sort. And that's where we're resuming with the bubble just going up. Again, you cannot talk. Anything that is said inside the bubble does not go outside and vice versa. Yeah. To layup is already experiencing that. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, Jatrell, but... Yeah, Jatrell. <laughs> so yeah, bubble has sprung up. What would you guys like to do? So, so we've already tried to scan the bubble. Well, no, that's you. The bubble has literally just come into being. Nobody scanned it yet. No, oh, Jatrell wants to. Oh, I see. I was gonna say we should scan the bubble. Yeah. Okay. Uh, uh, real easy. Reason, science, difficulty of one. Should I be scanning this too? I, it makes sense. I, I would. Yeah, you I were doing it from the outside, so you also okay. were a reason science. I'll assist. Uh, sensors as a focus. I'll give you sensors. Yeah. Oh God. Okay, interesting. There's a complication. I don't think I have any focuses on this. No, I don't think you do. Looking at your focus list, unfortunately, you no, also know. roll a complication. Perfect. No, I want to say while they're scanning, I want to see if we have contact with the ship. Okay. You do not. So Jennings, if he were to tap his communicator, he would get back to the ship. But those of you in the bubble. Uh -uh. But uh, what you both learn, what Jennings and Jatrell learn, is that the bubble uh, was almost snap formed, uh, almost like a uh, um, almost like an industrial replicator, where it can replicate extreme structures very quickly. Uh, the bubble is made out of some form of transparent titanium and cobalt alloy. And you can see each other, like you can see each other, you know, moving your tricorder and talking, you know, either inside or outside the bubble, but you can't actually hear is the difference. The complication is that Jennings, no, let's start with Jatrell. Jatrell's tricorder begins to spark and literally catches fire and you have to drop it and like stamp it out before it grows into, um, you know, a, a problem. But... It does now, If on everybody else's tricorder, you only have nine minutes of breathable air remaining in the bubble. <laughs> Jennings, oh. since you had a complication, your tricorder does the same, but you're not in any danger of, you know, losing air, at least in this space, as far as you know. Okay. All right. I mean, at this point, I'd like to, I'm going to tap my communicator and talk back to the, the ship. And let the commander know what's going on. All right. Yeah. So you get uh, Mr. Jaro. Uh, Jar Hi, Commander. You, I don't know what is happening here. They're in a bubble. <laughs> bubble? Are they in danger? Uh, they're going to run out of air, I would assume. I am the least capable person here of handling this particular situation. Do you want to beam someone over? Yeah. I, well, actually, I'm going to shout to. Um, to transporter bay to see if they can actually get a lock on the people in the bubble. Oh, that's a good idea. Negative, sir. We can't penetrate the bubble. Uh, can I just walk over and tap it? With I'll be using the broken track order. Yeah. So you just tap it and it makes a uh, metallic ringing sound. And inside the bubble, it's loud as fuck. <laughs> Safe. So I can and I can see the reactions. Yeah, you can see it. It's transparent. You can see. I'm gonna, I'm gonna tap it again. It's still loud. Ah. Yeah. Please stop doing that. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, I assume we have stopped uh, transmitting the frequency 
at this point? Yes. Okay. So let's not do that again. Probably a good idea. <laughs> uh, we need to somehow figure out a way to tell them that we come in peace. Uh, Commander, mm -hmm. can you beam me over at Tricorder? At Tricorder, yeah. Or, you... or three at this point, maybe? I don't know, something. <laughs> Someone that can help me out. Yeah. Um, can I send over a, a, a crewman with a, with a, with a Tricorder? Sure. I will say that if you give me two momentum, what this will be is you'll get not only an ensign, um, but you'll get like a whole engineering toolkit, which will have a tricorder, which will have a power cell, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. But perfect. the good news is that by doing the two momentum, I will not subtract from the time in the bubble. Okay. Yeah. So we'll, we'll I think we'll do that and we'll move, we'll move quick to make sure that this person gets there with the kit as ASAP. All right. So, uh, who actually beams over is, uh, who did our Ferengi officer? Uh, is it Seep? Sipe? Oh, that's me. Oh. Well. Two characters. <laughs> awesome. You can choose whether or not to talk to yourself, but, uh, Seep beams uh, I'm over. I'm my own best friend. And, uh, he says, uh, sir, I've, uh, I brought your tricorder. And he, he hands you a tricorder and an engineering kit. And I just push it back at him, and I grab him his shoulders, and I turn him around and face him at the bubble, <laughs> guide him gently towards it. And uh, he says, uh, "Sir, sir, rule of acquisition number sixteen. Oh, never mind." And uh, if you want to take over CP here for a moment, no, oh, you're actually doing better than I ever imagined you would be. But uh, no, uh, CP is going to scan the uh, scan the bubble himself kind of do percussive maintenance on the side of his tricorder a few times, scan again, and says, uh, Sir, I I believe I've figured out what it could be. Uh, you see that panel there? And he points at one of the mirror surfaces, uh, the same one that they tried to communicate with. It's still displaying the holographic data in that unknown language. And he says, I, I think there's a series of glyphs. Um, if you push them in a certain order, it might do something. It's just a hunch, though, sure. J just a hunch. I'll relay that to Commander, who I'm assuming is still on open comms. Yeah, yeah. Uh, can we go ahead with this? You got anything better? I I don't have anything. I don't have anything better. Uh, I leave it to your judgment. Off you go, Ensign. I say I would like to do something while Seep is scanning the bubble and trying to look at this. Sure. I'm gonna take my tricorder and just. Pretty much right out on it. Get us out of here, and two slips of latinum are yours. His eyes light up, and he's like, Ooh. <laughs> Two slips for a captain and his crew? That's it? The, the, let's say, for sake of argument, Seep is not a bargaining man when it's his captain on the line. Like, if it weren't the captain, maybe he'd bargain. But when it's the captain... <laughs> but uh, what this is going to be, uh, Jennings, is you and Seep, and you can decide who you're rolling for. Um, you two are going to be working together on an extended task to more or less figure out these glyphs and more or less do them, like touch them and activate them in a certain order. Uh, almost like uh, if you remember that episode of TNG where the Iconian virus took over the ship and data, has, you know, said like tap blue, then yellow, then blue, et cetera, et cetera. It's kind right. of the same thing here. It's there's some similarities to Starfleet. Like there is, it's obviously a security alert. It has colors. It there's a structure. It's just figuring out that structure. Is this something I can do with rolling dice? This is, and in oh, fact, that's fun. exactly what an extended task does. So uh, I'm going to type this all out because it is a bit of a doozy. Because uh, I don't think we've done really extended tasks yet, have we? No. no. Can, um, can Jaro also be part of this over the comms? Uh, if you tell me how. Um, well, I do have a cultural studies focus. Okay. So I mean, I think that just in terms of theoretical knowledge of when you of, about what to do when you're faced with the interface that you've never seen seen before 
Sure, I'll let that happen. All right, so let me type this out and press enter. All right, so the way an extended task works is it's actually very similar to rolling any other task. Uh, for your first roll here, you're going to be doing a control and a science, either Seep or Jennings. Either one of you is going to do a control and science. All right. And then your difficulty is going to be a four. And then if you pass that, what's going to happen is we're going to roll work and see if you get enough work to make a breakthrough. Now, breakthroughs are important because it, for this extended task, you need three breakthroughs to succeed. Now, every single attempt that you take at this takes two minutes. So, you're looking at those intervals there. That's two minutes. So, the intervals equal minutes in this scenario. What you can do, and I, I know this is a lot of information up front, but I you know, want to get it out there. What you can do is before you roll anything, you can spend one momentum to reduce your time at the attempt in half, a.k.a. one minute. Yes, I want to do that. Okay. <laughs> if the crew is okay with this. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, it's your lives. Jatrell yeah. is going to try and enter a, a Vulcan meditation that will cause his uh, body functions to slow down so he'll use up less oxygen. I like it. Yeah, uh, with uh, everybody, let's see. So I'm assuming Seep is going to do this role. Yeah, I got it out ready to go. Okay, so yeah. Uh, uh, control, science, difficulty of four. Jaro may assist with a reason in science. What's how many? What's the dice pool in this one? Uh, you start with two, but it is a difficulty four, so you may wish to buy some. Yes. <laughs> if you guys are okay with this. Yes, yep. go, go ahead. How many do I, how many can I buy? Uh with momentum you can buy two additional. So forty twenty? Mm-hmm. Okay. And I don't think and there's that's, any that spends all the momentum we have left, I think. Correct, yeah. it does. So I have a question. I have an answer. I, I took a new talent because you said the other one was not worth it, called Spirit of Discovery, where mm -hmm. I can spend my determination to give the team three momentum. You certainly can. Can I produce? tap in Morris code? on the on the bubble like i believe in you you'll figure this out like to encourage them and then that'll be me giving them more momentum to spend in the future that or you pull up your tricorder and just type it in there and you're like, yeah, it's like hey, i believe yeah. in you you can do this oh, be fine. oh no oh no oh. that is a complication for charo oh dear all right seep what you got i believe uh, in you. so by, by throwing more dice on this or is just the same the four same the four okay this will give you this will give you the ability to get four more next time. Oh, oh my goodness. Oh, We're all dead. He's only an ensign, guys. <laughs> so what happens, because there's two complications I have to think here. What happens is you press or seat presses the wrong glyph. Like Jarl says, Oh, I think it's this one. And of course seat presses it. It's the wrong one. And the alarms that are going off flash even brighter and louder and unfortunately those in the bubble only have seven minutes of air remaining and it's still a difficulty four task so uh what would you like to do mr seep um <laughs> jennings would step in at this point okay he'd like to try again yeah so it's what you say it was it was control science control science yep and if you guys have a creative way of how to encourage or help him, I definitely would allow you guys in the bubble to do something. Besides, you know, calmly wait your death, like, you know. <laughs> uh, let's just say this. Yeah, these are the two characters with absolutely no focuses for anything on this one. That's why I chose you. Yeah. <laughs> so I have a focus for computers. Mm -hmm. Could I somehow, like, I can see the glyph Thing going on, I was, like, I was interacting it. Could I? I, mean, I honestly don't know what I would do, like out of character. But like, is there some way that I, my character could interact through his tricorder to like give suggestions, and I could do like an extra role to advise, like use my advisor trait? Is that I'll tell you what. Yeah. Uh, why don't you do, Captain? Why don't you do an insight engineering as an assist? Okay. Now, before anyone rolls, are you giving me momentum to make it only a minute task, or is this going to be a two-minute task? I feel like that's a good idea. Let's save them. But if you wait, wait, because if you 
spend one momentum on making it a minute task, you only have enough momentum to buy one more dice. You would have difficulty to four tasks. All right. Momentum for rolling. Yeah, it's four dice. Okay. So we're still we're taking. It sounds like we're taking two minutes. Mm -hmm. Let's rolling four dice. Yep. Yeah. So it's an insight. What? Engineering. Oh boy. So insight. It's almost like I'm picking things that you guys aren't good at. One d twenty. And I have a focus. Please, for the love of all that is good and holy. <laughs> Fantastic. Hey! Success. I push that one. Mr. Hoya, is it possible that if you modified the phased photon particle inhibitor in your tricorder, you might be able to extend te a tetrion phase chamber, increasing the oxygen supply in the room? Well, we could try it. Would it hurt, right? Uh, the last time we <laughs> tried something, we got put in the bubble. I'm just All gonna right. point that let's, out. Um, let's let them resolve their role first, maybe, and then we'll we'll, we'll we can try that. Yeah. All right. So, so I'm Jennings. on the dice. I'm on the dice pool screen now. I'm selecting 40-20. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. So there's three, but the captain did assist you, so you can reroll one of those zeros. Let's do uh, that. Let me check those zeros, though. Okay, yeah, you're good. Okay. So just one d20. One d20. Yep. I thought with advisor it was any like as many d20s as they wanted. Am I wrong? No, it's just the one d20. Just one. But it is still the most powerful command talent. Hey, there's your four successes. Oh. So <laughs> this is now where it gets interesting because you what are essentially you're going to do now is you're going to roll a number of challenge die equal to two plus the discipline involved. So for you, that is science for this roll. So you are rolling three challenge die. Now, what I would point out here is that if you are able to roll five on the challenge die, like total, uh -huh. you are able to score a breakthrough. It's, it's like an injury in combat where five is the magic number. However, there is two resistance on this task, meaning that the first two successes you get are on, on the challenge die are reduced. So you can get rid of the resistance, but all that happens after the roll. So go ahead and roll me the three challenge die, and let's see where we stand. Lord have mercy. Okay. So as of right now, you are only doing one work, but with the resistance, you are doing zero work. So Perfect. there's a few things you can do. You can give me a threat to re-roll those zeros. You can give me another threat to add one per threat, so it's one more success per one threat, or you can give me one threat, or and or, because you can do all of these. You can give me one threat to negate the resistance. Wait, explain the difference between two and three again. So the second one is you are basically adding on free successes. So one success, one threat. Okay, got it. The third option is that you are getting rid of the resistance entirely. That sounds good. But it's not enough, right? Right. So unless oh, okay. unless you give me this threat and you're going to have to give me, even if you reroll, you would have to reroll really well, or you would have to give me a lot of threat for this to work. So I can give you three threats and then just end this. No, 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 no. no. <laughs> Sadly, no. Guys, uh, it's your lives know. on the line. I have no opinion. So it would cost a minimum of, of five threat to make this a success. No, so it depends on what he re it depends on what he gets when he re rolls. Okay. Mm -hmm. Because if he re rolls and he gets a couple of five, uh, twos, mm -hmm. then he's got the five we need. Then he'll have to spend the, but then, but we we'll want him to have spent the threat. To get rid of the resistance so that it actually right. counts as a five. Mm -hmm. So a minimum However, of two. That there's a one in six chance on both those dice that he rolled a two. So we probably would rather him because you can't. Is it you? You said he couldn't do both, right? No, you he can. can either buy successes or cancel the resistance. No, you, you can, can do either. Oh, no. uh, yeah. In which case, at this point, if he spends a threat to reroll, and then buys uh, like cancels the resistance. 
the resistance and then buys like a couple of successes. That's, that's not, really it's bad. only four. I mean, yeah. I, I mean, the thing is, is we can either let our lives live, rest on the possibility that he rolls really well, or yeah, we could give him a bunch of threat. What will it be, Jennings? <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm leaning on the threat. I'm not really feeling the dice luck right now, but it's you guys. The RNG seems to hate us tonight. I'd go with the threat. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So okay. we'll say that you give me, I believe that's what, six threat? If I did the math on that properly. Uh, so you give me six threat, and yes, you do manage to get enough work done. Now, this is an extended task. Normally, if this was a normal task, you would be complete. Uh, however, an extended task works differently. Uh, specifically in that you are still working with the same sort of uh, roles involved. However, because you did score breakthrough, two very important things happen, and I typed it out here. Not only did you get more work on the work track, you've also lowered the difficulty and the number of breakthroughs you have to get to succeed. So you only need two more breakthroughs to succeed. And you get a breakthrough if you fill up the work track. So basically, if you do five more work, you complete this entirely. Mm. But it is now at difficulty three, control science. And you have no momentum, unfortunately. Oh, I know. And then there are uh, only five minutes left. 3d20? Well, that's depending on uh, how many dice you want to give me, or with how many threat you want to give me for dice. It's one threat <sighs> for one die, three threat for two die. Yeah, let's do three threat for two die. Okay, so you're going to run 40-20 four, total. That sounds like a good restart. Control, sorry, you say control science? Mm-hmm. No pressure, of course. And Captain or Jaro, if you guys want to assist again, you can. I absolutely will. It was Insight Engineering. Mr. Hoya, perhaps if you rerouted the nonlinear subspace interference equalizer on your tricorder, you might be able to provide them uh, a split second advantage on their choice of glyphs. <laughs> You're all about well, taking these risks. <laughs> <laughs> So yeah. it's more like I don't generator. want to die, and I'm not the engineer, so I can't suggest these things that I'll do them. So I have to be like the doctor's, like, "Hey, hey, guy, did you know that you still have a tool? <laughs> you try it, I guess." You can only be assisted by one person, right? Correct. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So. Okay, Captain, got you too. Yeah. Yeah. Just yeah. yeah okay. Never mind. Go, Captain. Look, pu push the green one. Green one right. right there. So what am I how much how many am I rolling right now? 40 Roll the Irish. Roll the going? Irish. <laughs> I mean... Fingers crossed. Oh. Okay. But he assisted one. you. You succeeded, but he assisted you. So mm. you can re-roll that complication. Let's do that. So just one D twenty? One D twenty, yep. All right. Okay, so you didn't uh, you didn't get uh, a success, but it's not a complication. So you've scored another success, which means I need another three challenge die, please. And since you did not spend for the air, we're down to three minutes after this. But maybe you won't need it. So three to twenty again? No, three challenge die. Oh, back over oh, back to that. Okay. Okay, so we're in the same scenario as before, where you would have to give me six threat in order to complete this. Is all the threat just stacking up? Like yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Gross. <laughs> you can just do it. Yeah, I mean... Do we have any other choice? No, no. we don't. Not really. So it's a little bit dickish of me, but what's going to happen is I'm actually going to use the threat you give me to rob you of your success on the work track. <laughs> so what's going to happen is you're going to go down to difficulty of two and you only need one more breakthrough, but you only have three minutes remaining. All right. At this point, Hoya will definitely help out. <laughs> All right. What else we got to lose at this point? Is yeah. I our think. lives. <laughs> what are we trying to rig up? I mean, I, I'm the doctor. 
Yeah, I think really what 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 Hoya is doing is um, is just is the same kind of assistance that that the captain has been has been has been providing, but by uh, using but, stronger a stronger science. Okay, I allow it. Gentlemen, may I have one of your functioning tricorders? I believe if we combine a couple of the testing materials in the uh, baryonic chamber, we might be able to start a chemical reaction that will generate some oxygen, perhaps buying us 30 seconds to another minute of breathable atmosphere. Yeah, uh, Jatrell, why don't you roll me a daring medicine, please? Difficulty of two. Go for it. I mean, and if you succeed, I'll give you uh, another minute. Uh, I don't think I have a focus that applies in this instance. Just gotta believe. <sighs> no, but hey, it's not a complication. That's there you go. true. Could have been worse. All right, so Jennings. Mm hmm. Kind of important here. Are you spending for a reduced interval of attempt? You would have to give me one threat for that. Sure. Is this the same three options as before? Or? Yes, same three as before. I'll just do whatever I did last time. It sounds fine to me. All righty. So uh, you're going to do another control science, mm -hmm. and you need two successes here. All right. Nice. Hoya will, will help out. Um, um, could they use control engineering to help? Yeah, I'd allow it. I mean, yeah. All right. So Jennings, I need two successes here, buddy. Dice pool of two. Just two. All right. So we come down to the wire. You guys literally have, uh, if I did my math and threat spend correctly, you have one minute remaining in that bubble before you are out of oxygen. And at this point, Jennings. The situation could not be more dire. Yeah, I'm thinking about just phasering this thing. So what? What? You you only need to you need two successes. You could probably get that by spending a determination. Mm -hmm. You could um, spend determination here. So if you have a value that that applies for your next roll, you might want to just spend your determination and guarantee that that outcome. I don't necessarily know that I understand the values so much, but so I just declare something that seems semi-appropriate for this topic. Yeah, so basically you would apply a value to this situation, and if it applies, and I agree it applies, then you basically get two free successes to start with. I mean, a, a spirit decor seems the most appropriate one. Let's take a look at your sheet. Uh... I'll let that. I'll let that be a value. Sure, why not? So you still are going to roll because there is a, a chance of complication. So just yep. two d twenty control science. Just don't roll. Uh, yeah, you're fine. You're fine. So at the last possible second, almost like you, those of you in the bubble are, you know, starting to feel very hot, very humid. You know, I gasping for the really last breath of air. And then Jennings presses the final glyph, and the uh, bubble collapses. Or would if I could grab it on the right layer. But it collapses completely, and air rushes in immediately. And you all take a big <laughs> breath in. Caught it a bit close, weren't you? <laughs> yeah. Did you want to get back in, Captain? <laughs> I think we're good. Excellent work, Chief. No comment. Well, that orange circle just apparently lives there now. <laughs> so yeah, maybe maybe you're over here now. Let's just, just say you're over here now. All right, we're going to stay away from that side. But yeah, uh, as you all uh, emerge from the bubble, 
Uh, I have a question for Mr. Jensen. Okay. Uh, your tricorder, would you be looking at it right now? Uh, yes. Okay. So as uh, the alarms cut off and silence or relative silence falls and you gulp in air, Jensen, you look at your tricorder and what you realize almost alarmingly is that you're detecting emanations from the warp core, quote unquote. And for a split second, you worry that there's been a crack in the matter or antimatter feed into the core. But then you remember it's not really a warp core. And you maybe look up from your tricorder and you see a bright light is emanating from a crack in the core. Uh, and it is almost like a direct beam to a spot about a meter away from you. Uh, yeah, so I'm going to point it out and take a closer look and see if I can't get any more precise readings on that spot that I can see. Okay. Uh, roll me a reason and science, please. And if you have xenobiology, I or... do. <laughs> Heck yeah, I do. Uh, let's see. Uh, so what's this? And... Hey, look at that. You get to momentum. So what you realize, Jensen, is that almost like a swarm of nanobots, a being is being constructed before you. Captain, uh, you need to see this. Captain steps over. <laughs> so it appears they're forming some kind of being, maybe to more uh, directly communicate with us. Um, everyone step back from it. Jatrell regretfully pulls out his type one phaser, <laughs> a little, and steps in front of the captain. Captain takes a few steps back, beckons everyone back with him, yeah, waits for the being to be formed. And as it begins to take shape, there's the smell of uh, almost like sick bay, that sort of antiseptic smell that you would find in a doctor's office. Mm -hmm. um, but what appears before you is a two and a half meter tall humanoid uh, that is pale, naked, sexless, and actually doesn't really have much of features except for two really expressive blue eyes and uh, a mouth that is perhaps uncannably, uncannably well-formed. Uh, mm -hmm. You also see that it does not have five fingers. It only has four. Uh, but it raises its four-fingered hand and says in Federation Standard, as in not through the Universal Translator, Hello, I have prepared for this moment. It's good my preparations were not in vain. You are explorers, yes? We are as well. You may refer to me as... Curie. You are welcome for time here, but that time is short. I'm going to forcibly lower Jatrell's hand with weapon. <laughs> it's not up. He's just got it. He's just <laughs> moving you to the background. Side character. <laughs> sure. <laughs> Side character. <laughs> Greetings to you. I'm Captain Frederick O'Connor of the Starship Federation Starship, the Matahari. Uh, welcome to us and you. I, I must ask, is there a reason you decided to put us in a bubble and almost suffocate us to death? Well, I apologize. It is our nature that we wanted to make sure not only you were intelligent, hence the first attempt, and he motions at the exterior, and you probably get that he means the running light thing but also that you were compassionate. Well, putting us in a life or death situation sure did figure out both those things pretty quickly now, didn't it? That's why we did it. So I hate to cut to the chase here quickly, but your sphere or, or pocket in space is heading towards one of our, our outposts and it's due to collide with it here pretty soon. We're worried what the time dilation would do to those people. So, I hate to be somewhat forceful or, or direct, but is there any way you could change course and not go past it? And you know, the the oddly uncanny head like twitches a little bit and then uh, flashes a toothy smile and says, we have been monitoring the colony ships and vessels in that area. And we did recognize they were inhabited by advanced bi biological life forms. 
are they the same as you? Uh, some, and some different, but they're all part of our federation, our family, as it were, and we'd prefer for them not to disappear into a pocket of space and come out hundreds of years in the future, or thousands, as it were. Well, Captain. we are in need of new raw material for new plates and to restock our central star with hydrogen. We will need to sup upon the materials in the Oort cloud of that system. Is he saying that they're going to, like, eat people? Yep. Mm, and eat rocks. Well, at least, at least eat the Oort cloud, yeah. Yeah, they're gonna. Eat, yeah, he's gonna eat raw min minerals in a. Yeah, and some of their sun, if I caught that correctly. I think so. I'm not okay with that. Uh, also, <laughs> also, just to clarify again, the time goes faster in the bubble, not out the bubble. So right, but like this thing would they, go past it, and they would be like. They would age really fast, but they wouldn't emerge hundreds of years in the future. Right. They just. Now, their civilization would age thousands of years but mm -hmm. so i gotta take a moment out of character here like as a person i'm not really sure how to progress i just knew that we wanted them not to go through so i well, um can we offer them some alternative i was to say if we could, have, if we could get a list of the materials prawl, prawl, that they i have an prawl. idea what you got prawl i'm assuming now we have contact back to the matahari yeah once the bubble went down you could get back to the ship are there any uninhabited solar systems nearby? There are. And in fact, if you give me your intelligence officer ability, you know of one. I will give you that ability, and I will put that forward as an alternative as opposed to where they are currently headed. And uh, the mouth uh, continues to smile and says, Yes, this is acceptable. We apologize for any inconvenience. We do not wish to harm anyone. However, I am very, very curious. And, you know, he kind of looks at his hand, then looks at one of yours, and he says, I understand that you breathe and you eat and do something called sleeping. Yes. Well, these, these things fascinate me. I, I wish to experience them. Uh, first officer. Yes. Could you teleport us over some uh, sausage on a plate, warm, maybe some potatoes? <laughs> Meat? Yeah, just a meal, well prepared. Just have a replicator whip something up, teleport it next to me. Uh, okay. Yeah. And it should be under Frederick O'Connor 1 4. It's uh, it's a, it's a something my mother used to make. It's pretty good. Sure, sure. I uh will speak that into the replicator and get that traditional Irish, traditional Sausage. Irish breakfast. Haggis. Haggis blood pudding. That's Scottish. Oh, that's right. That's Scottish. I'm terrible. I'm sorry. Oh, okay. Sorry. Just like a like sausage and potatoes. I don't know. Something yeah, like yeah, yeah. And ask the teleporter crew to to send it down. Sir, can you clarify you wish us to send the captain a meal? It's not for me, it's for our new friend. The captain thinks that this is a diplomatic advantage. Aye, sir, beaming sausages and potatoes. Don't forget to send silverware. And uh, materializing next to you on the railing uh, around the warp core is a plate of sausages and potatoes. So our new friend, this is something your brother used to make me when I was young. I think you'll love it. Slide it over to him. You know, he uh, he does almost the seven of nine thing where he first goes in with his his hands. Not sure if he's like supposed to use that. Like he doesn't know what a fork is. I'm gonna go over and I'm gonna I'm gonna use my etiquette focus, even though I'm not rolling. I'll be like, let me just show him, cut it, and I'll show him how it works. And yeah. he, he gets it. He gets it pretty well. Like he does the whole thing. He actually mimics you quite well. He scoops up some, takes a bite, chews it, makes the motion as if he swallowed, and then he uh, sort of leans his head back and just sort of nem it back onto the, not like throw up, but just sort of nem back onto the uh, the plate. And he says, 
it's a very interesting experience. Uh, digestive tract. I did not make one for this form. That would be required for the full experience. Hmm. Well, it was still an enlightening experience, uh, masticating and consuming. Uh, it's not something that we know of. Where, At least not in a biological sense. Where does your species originate from, and how long have you been around? The enlightened have been around for a very long time. Do you know where exactly you, you started? Have you always been in this form, or is this some kind of advanced state of being that you achieved? You know, his eyes narrow just a little bit, and the smile falters just slightly. And he says, We are not unlike what I understand your gods to be, though I do not wish to be seen as a god. But we are... We do not know of a time when we were not, would be a good way to put it. Are you all one being or are your individual minds acting as one being how do you experience existence as you can see we each have our own lives to live our own breath to breathe our own food to chew uh, we communicate with each other but not on such a level as i believe you do do you have individuality or is it more of just an existence as one so he actually reaches towards you and uh at the last minute diverts his hand to pluck up part of the railing and he shows you the tiny plate, sort of flips it over and says, every single one of these is an entity. We exist almost as a hive mind, but as individuals at the same time. I have been chosen as not a warden, perhaps, but as a liaison. An ambassador of sorts. Yes, that is a good word. How were you chosen? What was the reason you were chosen above all others? I was the first to notice your ship had entered. Seemed a fair reason as any. Would anyone else like to interact with it? I don't know. I think that silence is they're letting you have him this one, Captain. Yeah. Fair enough. I mean, I don't want to steal a show here or anything. It's... So I. I'd like to spend just a couple minutes asking it questions about its existence, its culture, why mm -hmm. they're doing what they're doing, what their goals are, um, you know, what's their what's their end purpose. You know, obviously they have this advanced technology, this 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 amazing you know machine of sorts. It's probably offensive to call it a machine. Mm -hmm. I'm going to tread the line very carefully because I don't want to offend the creature. It's been very cordial thus far. Mm -hmm. uh, so, but I ask a lot of just questions, and I'm trying to gather as much as I can. Looking mm -hmm. back at the crew, like just take as much information as you can. I will mm -hmm. ask its permission if we can take more detailed scans of it. Oh, it actually welcomes it. Like it says, no, okay. please, please. If you go don't for mind, it. we'd just like to learn as much about you as we can, mm -hmm. and I'm happy to answer any questions you can as well. This is, you know, this is a first contact situation, and this is what we live for to learn from you and to hopefully have you learn from us. Well, the one thing I would say is that we will not be sharing any technology. We no, have not no, deemed no, no, you. No. We wouldn't ask that. We just want to know about more of you and, and how you exist and how you communicate culture, as it were, if that word rings a bell with you. It does. It's an odd concept, but we know of it. Uh, Captain, he was about to inform us of what he had not yet deemed us as. Oh, what do you deem us as? I mean no offense. I simply say that you are not as advanced as the enlightened are. So this is like similar to our, I would like to take a moment to explain to him like our, is it the prime directive? Am I having a mental block? We have a similar. It's, yeah, it's the same prime directive. Yeah, like where we like we don't share technology with like pre-warp civilizations. Uh -huh. We completely mm -hmm. understand like we wouldn't be able to handle that information. Exactly. Just, it's enlightening and inspiring for us to know that this is something that could be achieved this level of technology. Like it is, it is, it is possible. Just the knowledge that it exists is, is fascinating. I would like him to explain more if he can about what he's actually, like what they're trying to accomplish. Also, does his species have a name? Oh, it's the enlightened. The, the name the of the species well, is, is the enlightened. Yeah. Okay. yeah. Perfect. So um, yeah. As far as the purpose is concerned, they're just explorers. They're out here to do what you're doing. That's incredible. They have so much in common. Yeah, but, I would like to ask uh, something. Oh, go for it. I'm uh, going to 
you know, take out the tricorder with a picture of the or this picture and description of the probe we were initially looking for mm-hmm. and ask if they came across this in their travel. And they look at it. They say, yes, we did not know what to do with it. Could it be returned to us? It is done. And uh, Jaro, you suddenly have a probe sitting on your bridge. Is it reasonable to assume I was listening in on the conversation? Yeah, I think that's fair, yeah. Okay, okay. But it's still like, it's just boop. Yeah. Oh, so it, did it have like the, the teleporter? No, just right, shimmer. Just, oh, okay. Okay, so it was like my reality was bent. Mm-hmm. Right. Okay. That's... I'll just like relay that message. Like, yeah, uh, we got it. Like, that was really easy. Um, do you have a specific destination or are you just gathering as much information as you can? We are uh, currently circling this galaxy. Eventually we will move on to another. You However, I do wish to experience more of these human things. Would it be acceptable for me to perhaps leave a... What would you call it in your terms? A hologram in your computer? Um, I mean, nah. I mean, no disrespect, but we've recently had a somewhat of an issue uh, with a similar program, so it's not something we'd be comfortable with at this time. Captain, uh, with uh, yes, Commander Pro, would you be able to leave a physical avatar? I could leave a physical avatar. Yes, however, it would decay rapidly. In fact, this one is already disintegrating. And you actually like look at its form mm. crucially and you notice that it's not being quite Thanos, but it is like coming apart at the <laughs> seams. Is it would it Captain, be acceptable? Go ahead. Yes. Would we not be able to use a portable mobile emitter? Perhaps a shielded one, which does not interact with the ship's systems? If the rest of the crew security, is that something that would be acceptable? And would that be safe? I mean if can I be snarky here and say that if my suggestions have been followed, this would have been fine in the first place to just let them go over? But sure. I can have one beam down. I will explain this to our new friend, and if he's acceptable with it and no, none of the crew has any concerns or objections, I think that's completely fine. Okay. So I think that's uh, that's how we're going to actually end the episode with the uh, tri or the hollow emitter or the hollow projector. You know what I mean? The badge gets beamed in. Mercury creates a copy of himself in it. And you guys sort of spend a few days just in this uh, cloud showing him what humanity is like. And uh, that's where we're going to end the session because you've diverted it away from the colony. So it's just sort of a, a feel-good ending there. Yay! Yay! Nobody that. died, and we made a friend. Mm-hmm. Yay! Yeah. What did you guys think? Uh, now that we've actually gone through the majority of the adventure, uh, if you're curious, uh, that was called the Nest in the Dark uh, mission. If you're curious about the intricate details of that, but yeah, it's uh, it's an interesting adventure. I did have to change a few things. But uh, I'm curious, what did you guys think of it? It was a good. I liked it. It was good. Yeah, yeah it was really good. I knew I'd regret putting one in science. <laughs> <laughs> it was really cool to have both like the characters, like like some of our players like knew like the prime numbers thing, and then mm-hmm. like also having roles. So it was a little bit of like player knowledge and both in yeah, and out by, like yeah. meta game. Like that was a really cool thing, and to, like to see like we quickly figure out some things, the other things we didn't. Some of the bad mm-hmm. roles. Like, it was it was a cool dynamic. I enjoyed it. Cool. Yeah. All right. Well, uh, in that case, that's where I'm going to cut the stream. So Twitch, YouTube, thank you so much for tuning in. We'll see these lovely individuals in two weeks' time. Later, stream. Okay.